Hi everybody, welcome to the Sew Essential vlog. I'm Lucy and I'm here today to share my top five beginner sewing patterns. So these are things that I've made. So I know that the construction is very, very simple. There's a limited number of steps. They're nice and easy to sew, but also they're easy to wear because I'm still reaching for them all the time, even though some of them are made several years ago at the beginning of my sewing journey. All of the patterns I talk about today are available on our website and you'll find links to our website and the patterns below. And we'll also pop a link to our blog below, which is just like this channel. You'll get lots of tips and tutorials, things that will hold your hands through your beginner sewing journey. So it's worth subscribing to our channel for that as well. So the first pattern I'm going to talk to you about today is McCall's 8051, which is a simple skirt pattern. You can see I've got one of the versions I made here um, on, and it's just a lovely, simple, sort of straightish skirt. Um, it's got darts at the front and darts at the back, which give you a bit of shape and are a great technique to learn early on in your sewing journey, because this is what we use to create the shape that we need to fit our bodies. It's finished with a, a facing, so it hasn't even got a waistband, so it's a very, very simple finish. You just sew a little bit of fabric um, and tuck it inside is the way a facing works. So that's a nice, simple, easy finish there. And then it's fastened with a zip um, at the back. Now, I've put an exposed zip on this version of the skirt. Um, I wouldn't recommend that for a beginner, that's a bit more of an advanced technique, but the pattern suggests just a normal skirt zip and that's that's the, what the instructions are for. So I sort of hacked it and made it my own by putting the exposed zip on, but the instructions in the pattern will just tell you how to do a normal skirt zip. So another great technique for you to get under your belt early on. Um, it's just the per a great skirt for beginners. I made this one in a leather look fabric, which I definitely wouldn't recommend for a beginner. That's a bit more of an advanced fabric. But for a beginner, I would recommend you could use denim, you could use a cotton that's uh, got a bit of weight and structure to it, like a cotton sateen perhaps. Nothing too floaty and drapey like a cotton lawn, but something like a cotton sateen. Um, a nice sort of medium weight crepe would work. Um, so there's lots and lots of different options that you can use. And then like I've done, once you get a bit more experience and you get a bit more adventurous, you can try other types of fabrics, you can try other types of zip fastenings, but it really is a lovely wardrobe staple I wear this leather look one all the time I wear it I absolutely love wearing it this is the shortest version which comes a couple of inches probably above the knee but this pattern does also come in five lengths so there's a lot of mileage there as well you can make different variations of it which I've done I also made one of the longer lengths. This isn't the longest one, but it's probably about knee length. I attached it to a bodice to make it into a dress, um, but I made it in this satin back crepe fabric um, and that worked out really well as well. The fit was really good on that as well. Um, so yeah, there's options for five different lengths. There's also options to have a go at sewing a vent on the back of the skirt, which is when there's a little sort of opening and a little flap on the back at the bottom of the skirt, which just allows you a bit more movement for those longer midi lengths. Um, and then there's also options to sew some little belt loops on as well. So lots of things to have a play around with. Lots of mileage in this pattern, but a classic wardrobe staple that you'll find yourself reaching for time and time again. The next pattern I want to share with you is the Tilly and the B Buttons Agnes top, which I'm wearing at the moment. So this is a jersey or knit top. I've untucked it so you can see what it looks like untucked. Um, I've made the long sleeve version, but you can also make a short sleeve version. Um, and then there's also options for a little bit of ruching at the front here or doing some ruching on the sleeves. Now, a lot of people avoid knit and jersey fabrics when they're starting out on their sewing journey and I think to be honest that's probably born out of the fact that um, back in the day jersey and knit fabrics weren't very readily available, they were a little bit more difficult to come by, therefore there were less sewing patterns designed for them, people were less aware of them and less experienced with them and I think that's carried through. But in today's market, jersey and knit fabrics are really readily available. They're super comfortable and easy to wear. If you look in your wardrobe, you've probably got lots of knit and jersey, simple t-shirts and dresses and things. Um, 
So I just think actually it's a great idea to sort of cut your teeth on these fabrics early on in your sewing journey and, and be brave and have a go because um, I certainly did that and I'm really glad that I did because I discovered that actually there's nothing to be scared of and certainly with Tilly and the Buttons patterns they really hold your hand every step of the way so they tell you how to sew with these fabrics what needles you might want to use you'd want to use a ballpoint or a stretch needle and you can get all of those on our website the links um, to to our website are below um, but they really hold your hand through it and I just think actually it's a great idea to just have a go early on and, and get your confidence with these fabrics because you can make lots of really comfortable wearable garments if you can build your confidence up with these. I think the most challenging thing that you'll have to do is sew the neck band on but again Tilly in the instructions explicitly talks you through exactly how to do that and um, really holds your hand through it all um, so yeah I would highly recommend this pattern and I just think it's something that many of us need in our wardrobe and will wear lots and lots and lots so that's my second pattern. The next pattern I want to share with you is Simplicity 1200 which is a lovely circle skirt pattern so if you're somebody who likes a bit more fullness in your skirt this is the pattern for you. It comes in several different lengths so the length I've made unfortunately you can't quite see but it comes to just below my knee um, but there are other length variations as well. There is a waistband on this skirt and then it's fastened with a zip at the side there. Now I chose to do a concealed or invisible zip there um, but you could choose to just do a normal skirt zip which is what's um, suggested in the pattern. So it's a nice simple easy make again, um, classic classic look to have in your wardrobe as well. As I said there's options for different lengths with this one and then there's an option for a contrast band at the bottom of the skirt. There's an option to do the skirt without a waistband as well. And then there's also an option to do a version with like an overskirt so it's a really nice look say with a broderie anglais or a lace or something like that where you want to have um, a skirt underneath and then something sheer on the top for example so I just thought it gives you a few different options to play around with on this very classic take on a circle skirt. So I should just say as well, the skirt that I just talked you through, the circle skirt Simplicity 1200, I made that in a medium weight crepe, it is for woven fabrics again, so things like a medium weight crepe or a cotton sateen would be a great fabric to work with on that skirt um, for a beginner. So on to the next pattern which is the Cielo dress and top pattern by Closet Case Patterns. So I'm wearing the top at the moment. It's a lovely modern boxy tee. Um, there's no fastenings, no zips, no buttons, nothing like that to worry about. Just You just pop it on over your head which makes it lovely and comfortable and easy to wear. Um, and um, it's easy to sew up as well. I made the top in a cotton lawn but I also made the dress in a denim as well so you can see that there and the dress version is just a lovely simple loose fitting uh, shift dress. There are bust darts so you've got a little bit of shape at the bust which is nice on the top and the dress um, but yeah both of those were lovely and easy to make and what I really like about this pattern is you get some serious mileage from it so you might start out by making the very simple boxy t-shirt in a cotton lawn like I have but then you can move on to more advanced fabrics things such as uh, crepe de chines or uh, viscose fabrics which are a bit more luxurious and a bit more flowy and fluid and will give you a different look to the garment and also a different feel they'll probably feel a bit more dressy and a bit more luxurious so I've seen people make some lovely evening tops in those fabrics with this pattern and um, there's some nice details and nice techniques that you'll learn making the pattern though so there are bust darts um, there's also a little yoke across the back which means there's just a little panel across the back there which just gives a little bit of interesting detail but it's easy to sew, it's nothing to be worried about. Um, there's also lots of variations on the neckline finishes and the sleeve finishes as well so 
for the neckline there's um a bias binding finish which i've done on the t-shirt here um, or you can choose a facing finish which i've done on the dress here that's just when you have a little bit of fabric that sits on the inside of the garment to just finish off that um neckline and then with the sleeves there's some options for some really voluminous sleeves with a bit of gathering here or the simple sleeve that i've chosen longer sleeves shorter sleeves so there really are so many different combinations and options and i think you can start off as a complete beginner and go for one of the more simple versions but then as you build your skills and your confidence you can try some different fabrics and some different techniques with this one so it's a real winner so the last pattern I want to share with you today is the Ogden Cami Top by True Bias, which I'm wearing now. So I've made it in a bit more of an advanced fabric. This is a viscose fabric. They tend to be a bit more fluid and drapey and have a bit more movement in them. Um, but it is a top for woven fabric. So again, you could make it in a cotton fabric, like a, a nice lightweight cotton lawn. You wouldn't want anything too heavy because you do want it to hang and drape nicely. Um, there's a couple of different a few different techniques in this top so um you've got the straps which you need to turn through um that's probably one of the more challenging aspects i suppose but it's a good one to learn so when you sew a strap you sew a rectangle of fabric right sides together and then you have to pull it through to turn it through but we sell loop turners they're very inexpensive you can get them on our website the links below um, or you can use a safety pin there's various different methods for that and she talks you through that in the instructions um, the instructions are really detailed really helpful um, there's not many steps to making this pattern at all I think there's only three pattern pieces which are the bodice piece um, the lining which sits inside it's sort of like a, it comes down to about there I think it is um, and then the strap piece so it is nice and simple there's not many steps it comes to very get together very easily and I just think it's a great item to have in your wardrobe because you can layer it with cardigans and jackets you can wear it with jeans like I am or you can wear it with a pair of shorts um, and everyone just needs one class a classic cami in their wardrobe don't they so i hope you've enjoyed that today if you like what you see today please like and subscribe as i mentioned at the start of the video you'll find links to our website and our blog below and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel if you want more tutorials general guides sewing inspiration we do regular updates of new patterns and dressmaking fabrics you can find it all here and i'll look forward to seeing you next time